We continue our look at the Invasion storyline 20 years later with a Sky Box Office exclusive. I'm talking about Rebellion 2001 from November 3rd at the Manchester Evening News Arena in Manchester, England, England, across the Atlantic Sea. Now, like I mentioned, technically this show was never officially nominated on Patreon before I cut off requests. So the loophole I discovered, besides the fact that this is my channel, I can do what I want, is that way back when backer Mario Greco nominated that I can pick whatever I I want. So he basically gave his uh, pick of a show to me. So that's how we're doing this. In the spirit of the nominations, thanks to you, Mario, this show, Rebellion 2001, is now being covered as part of the whole story arc. Now, as is the case with most UK pay-per-views, except for like SummerSlam 92, this is a show that does not count in the grand scheme of things. It's non canon essentially. If you treat it like a traditional US pay-per-view, it's going to be kind of a weak show because, you know, very few stories, if any, are going to be advanced in any meaningful way. Basically, my advice to you in watching this show is to treat it like a fancy yet ultimately inconsequential episode of TV. 15,612 folks in attendance, Jim Ross and Paul Heyman on commentary. Heyman's thousand yard stare at the beginning is kind of creepy. He's in pause mode here. The opening hype packages for the Rock and Austin title match in the main event. I'm pretty sure these two have not interacted once since the Rock came back. So this is all just like chopped together from, they're basically recycling the footage from the My Way package for Mania 17. Your opening match is a steel cage match for the Intercontinental Championship as Edge defends against Christian in what I'm pretty sure is their last one-on-one match we'll ever see with these two, at least on TV. Christian is the new European champion. He beat Bradshaw for it on the SmackDown before Rebellion, but if you go look on the Google machine and try and find the November 1st, 2001 SmackDown results, that match does not show up in the results or any reviews of the show, and that's because this match actually was filmed at that taping, but it was cut from broadcast due to time constraints. Also, don't forget, Christian is a member of the Alliance now, as if that has any bearing on the greater storyline between the two sides. I was happy to see the Black cage used here. I'm pretty sure it's the last time we see this version of the cage in action. We get some brawling to start this off. Christian quickly tries to escape from the get-go. Shades of Owen Hart versus Brett at SummerSlam 94. Edge goes for a spear but eats the steel instead. Christian takes over, beats down Edge for a good while, goes to escape but Edge stops him. Edge blocks a superplex and hits a big cross body off the top. Catapult into the cage by Christian and gets the sleeper locked in. Christian with the corner punches. Edge pushes him away, hits a spear. We get a double down but why do the count if it's a cage match. Counters upon counters, Edge with the Edge-O-Matic and a two, Edge with repeated throws into the cage, Edge goes to escape and gets crotched on the top rope. How does it feel, Edge? Christian goes to climb out, but Edge stops him. He ties his ankles together through the cage with his own boot laces. Christian is helpless as Edge climbs over the top, decks Christian on the way down, and wins to retain. I give it three and a half stars out of five. The match I thought was a great way to open the show. I don't think it had quite the same kind of emotional impact or overall drama and excitement as the latter match they had at No Mercy did, but still a fun match all the same. I thought the finish was very creative. Never seen that done before quite that way. Uh, kind of sad, the end of an era. Like I said, I'm pretty sure these two never interact with each other, like especially as rivals ever again, and they rarely interact really ever after this point, and maybe once or twice, like years down the line. But this is pretty much the end of the Edge and Christian saga as we know it for a while. They show a recap of Kurt Angle joining the Alliance last week on Raw. On that night, Shane warned Vince that someone would defect by the end of the night. Everyone suspects everyone else. Vince gives Kurt permission to go have a meeting with Austin, who directly recruits him. Angle spends all night denying he'll defect. Then he does, and along with The Rock and Jericho already imploding against each other, things are looking very dire for Team WWF. Watching it back then as it was happening and watching it now 20 years later, both times I'm like, from any story perspective, none of this makes sense. Just not only from like what what Angle had done over the last several months against Steve Austin, but also his whole philosophy was he wanted to associate himself with winners, which, yeah, the Alliance are kind of winners, but no more so than the Federation at this point on average, except for a couple of rare exceptions. And Steve Austin welcomes Kurt with open arms. He gives Kurt an Austin hat. He recovers Kurt's gold medals from the Detroit River, and Angle is very appreciative of this. Kind of gets back to the goofy side of Angle we saw. Like, we get a slight return to the angle Austin chemistry we saw like before invasion but this feels almost kind of like a derivative it's never quite the same kind of magic as we saw earlier in the year and I just want to remind everyone that for the purpose of this review we are not looking at the storyline with the power of hindsight already built in I know it's easy to do that and because many of us know where this bit with Kurt Angle is going so we're just gonna go along for the ride here but just looking at it in the moment Angle's defection really doesn't make a whole lot of sense backstage Chavo Guerrero Jr. is a roving reporter tonight he 
He wants to interview the Divas, but wait, here comes Bill DeMott. He also wants to interview the Divas. They decide to team up and just barge into the locker room in the middle of Trish changing. And instead of acting horrified and screaming at them to get out, she's surprisingly patient with them as she tells them to leave. Then the camera stays in the locker room and Trish does not seem to notice or care. It kind of breaks the immersion. Up next, the Hurricane, who's playing with a new face paint variant tonight, takes on Scotty Too Hotty. So where the hell's Scotty been lately? Well, he spent most of 01 selling a broken ankle at the hands of Kurt Angle back in February. He's been like in the background, some of these like crowd shots, like locker room backstage things with the like, team WWF like, in the last couple of weeks, but that's been about it for Scotty as far as this invasion angle is concerned. Match begins with some traditional back and forth. Scotty goes for an attack in the corner, but he hits the ring post instead, walks into a neck breaker and Hurricane takes over. Nice move by Hurricane, taking Scotty down by his own arms, doing that cool straight jacket submission I loved putting on my own creator wrestler in No Mercy. JR saying a grown man wearing a green cape. He may need a psychologist. Hurricane goes to the flying nothing. Scotty hits him. Both men are down. Crowd very into this at this point. Super kick by Scotty. He goes for a suplex that makes a weird horse noise. <laughs> Hurricane goes for the worm, or as Heyman calls it, the slug. Scotty stops it, goes for a choke slam, but Scotty fights out, hits the worm, and damn, the crowd loves that move. And he beats him with it. He actually beats him with it. I don't think I've ever seen a Sky Too Hotty match where he actually A, hits the worm, and B, puts someone away with it. I think it's the first time that I can recall, as my memory is very fuzzy, but it's pretty rare when that happens. I'm gonna give this match three stars out of five. It's a very entertaining match between two characters who like work well together, but otherwise have nothing to do with each other because this match does feel kind of like, eh, it's there. Backstage, Trish is still helping Hugh Morris and Chavo for some reason. Says she'll go get Lita for an interview with them, but these two weirdo horn dogs can't wait. They peek in on Lita putting her pants on. They're just going overboard with her reactions. Like, whoa, yeah, lady in her underwear. I can't believe this. Lita's got the proper response to this sort of behavior, and they get chased out, and they're still like, fuck yeah, woo, peeping toms. So strange. Like, can you believe this is like the only sizable like, on-air time Chavo and Hugh Morris, like, ever get during the storyline and it's never brought up again? It's he, it's he, it's DDP. Diamond Dallas Page back in the swing of things after his knee surgery after SummerSlam. He's been on TV for the last several weeks doing these vignettes with his creepy smile and his very positive attitude. Here on the live mic, he says the people of England aren't jolly, they're depressed, but as he says, that's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. Cause when they're as low as they are, they can only go up. On we go now, this blast in the past in WCW as DDP takes on the Big Show. The Big Show asserting his will early on. DDP just bouncing all over the place for him. He hits the chop block and begins the attack. Even it's a diving clothesline and takes Show down. Big Show powers out of a submission and takes over again. Page with a diamond cutter. Shoulders back, chest out of nowhere. But he is too beat up to pin him in time. Show hits what JR calls a 36 stone choke slam to win. After the bell, Page on the mic repeats his catchphrase. Tries to heal on the UK but Show's music plays over him. Win! Because now I get to get the hell out of this country! I give it one star out of five. You know, it's good to see DDP back, I guess, but I mean, man, when you compare this to like four months ago, uh, the luster is totally gone off this former WCW champion. What happened? Chavo and Hugh Morris barge in on Molly Holly, who screams because she's missing her cape. On the one hand, I'm sick of these skits. On the other hand, that was a solid gag. Elsewhere in some sort of interrogation room, we have Shane McMahon, Steve Austin, Deborah, and Kurt Angle conspiring to take over. Kurt suddenly realizes they're sitting at a round table, and hey, they're in England, therefore, Knights of the Round Table. He calls Austin King Arthur, Deborah as Guinevere, calls Shane Merlin, and lists himself as Sir Galahad. Then he's like, you gotta have your bad knights too, like The Rock is Sir Lancelot. Like, what? I didn't realize Lancelot was a bad guy in the King Arthur stories. Austin finally snaps and is sick of Kurt's goofy shit, tells him to get the job done against Chris Jericho later tonight. Up next, an elimination match, the WCW tag titles as the Dudley Boys defend against the APA and the Hardys. Yes, folks, the spirit of WCW is very much alive here. It's basically a three-way dance, but ironically, Paul Heyman never refers to it as such. Speaking of which, I love how Heyman puts the Dudleys over big time here as the first like triple crown tag team champions, the first team to have won the WWF, the WCW, and the ECW tag titles. He also asks, why is Jeff Hardy 
Hardy working in the ring with a baseball hat on? The eternal question. Some good action with these three teams. They all know each other very well at this point. Farouk goes for a slam. Jeff turns it into a backslide attempt, but Farouk powers out of that, and Jeff hits a drop kick. Very nice sequence. Bradshaw stops the what's up from happening, hits his super fallaway slam onto Devon. The Dudleys with the not the three D on Farouk. Matt hits him with a twist of fate. The three count. The APA is gone. Then we all get spoiled. And the APA have been eliminated. It's down to the Hardys and the Dudleys. Bubba tells Devon to get the tables. The crowd goes eight for that. Jeff gets beaten up by Bubba on the outside, showing a lot of resilience. He takes all the heat for several minutes. Jeff crotches Bubba on the top, hits a Hurricane Rana. We get the hot tag. Some good old Hardys double team stuff. Jeff goes for a swan tom, but he does not get it. The 3D to Matt, the Dudleys retain, which he already knew was going to happen. I give it three stars out of five. It was a solid tag team match. We've seen these teams interact plenty over the last like, year and a half or so, but still very entertaining for the crowd. Big shame about that theme botch though. There's a recap of Chris Jericho and The Rock imploding as a team. There's a couple of miscommunications and they lose the tag titles that they won the night after No Mercy. Back live, Mr. McMahon in his brown leather jacket sitting in between Jericho and The Rock, trying to have them bury the hatchet in the name of Team Solidarity for Survivor Series. Tells them to shake hands. They do. Things seem cool but then Jericho twisting the knife and telling Rock not to lose another big one. Rock pops him in the face. This is the one thing, by the way, from this entire pay-per-view that actually is carried over onto the following Raw on Monday as like, here's a storyline development. So they got one little nugget of like actual storyline advancement out of the show. Alliance Commissioner Willie Riggs gets no love in his home country as he takes on his former assistant, Tajiri. He says the crowd's envious of him because he's their role model, and if the kids here follow people like David Beckham or anyone from Manchester United, they end up in strange ways prison up the street. Early on, Riggle with an advantage, but Tajiri dinks him with a little kick out of nowhere. Very nice. I love hearing Paul Heyman dropping some Cockney accent here, or his best attempt therein. You're correct oh. about the way people talk here. Well, I can turn Why did I ever want to go around looking like this? Yeah. On the outside, Regal throws Tajiri into the ring post, roughs him up on the apron, and takes over. Regal rebounds out of the corner and walks right into a giant palm strike. Tajiri begins to come back with some kicks, a missile drop kick off the top. We get the handspring elbow and the tarantula. He goes for a moonsault but misses. The Regal stretch, Tajiri taps. Regal looking pretty pleased with himself after the bell, but Tajiri gets up and sprays him with the mist. Might have been a bit more helpful to use it during the match, but what do I know? This one gets two and a half stars out of five for me. I thought this was a well done match. They had all the big moves, the crowd was into it, but the match was pretty short, sadly. Michael Cole's backstage with the US champion, Kurt Angle. He makes his own Strange Ways reference. Okay, was this place in the news recently or what? I'd be more okay with it actually if the next person to cut a promo also made their own Strange Ways reference, but that does not happen. But you know, rule of three would have been nice. Angle says that Y2J stands for yellow, as in coward, two as in number two, AKA poop, and jerk. He calls it a Mickey Mouse nickname, then sings the Mickey Mouse Club song. Okay. M-I-C-K-E-Y. It's so cringy watching him cut these promos. It was already not great near the end of his babyface run, but here it just feels like a cheap parody of his promos when he was a heel the first time around, when he was very howdy doody, very oblivious as to his own assholishness to people around him. It feels like he's trying too hard to go back in that direction, and it's almost to his detriment. But then again, if the goal is to get people to hate him for it, then mission accomplished. WCW title match up next as Chris Jericho defends against Angle. Jericho, a heel? Not in Manchester, baby. Quick back and forth to start things off. Jericho hitting three vertical suplexes in a row before Eddie Guerrero made it cool. Kurt responds with a scintillating German suplex. Fight on the outside. Jericho hucks Kurt into the steps, throws him into the ring post twice in a row and begins to work the arm. Jericho on top for a long time until Angle drops him into the ropes. It's a big suplex. JR says Angle is going commando in his quest to become a double champion. I'm not sure that's the correct saying. The offense continues for Angle. Very good selling by Jericho here. Chris comes back, hits an enziguri. There's a double down. Jericho with a cool counter out of a German into a victory roll into an ankle lock. Kurt with the Germans. Jericho kicks out of the cover. Chris counters the ankle lock into the walls. Kurt grabs the ropes. Lion salt attempt is blocked. Kurt goes for his angle slam, but Jericho counters the roll up and the win. Kurt beats Jericho down after the bell, hits a couple of angle slams and stands tall. Didn't we just get that in the last match, but in reverse? I give this one four and a half stars out of five. I think it's a phenomenal match, and if for nothing else, go back and watch the show just for this one. I think in my opinion is the best of the night. Great technical work here. And these two have fought before in the past, but these were given these guys were 
given a lot of time, and they really made it work. It was a very dramatic match. Michael Cole backstage with The Rock. How can Rocky concentrate with all this Jericho drama going on? The Rock compliments him for the question and calls him one of the great journalists in the game today. Sadly, it happened on a UK pay-per-view, so that compliment does not count. Rock wants to go to the pub and get some of that English pie, and he says Cole wants the English strudel. Rock symbolizes pie by putting his hand in front of his face and sniffing for a second, and he symbolizes strudel by pointing at Cole's dick and laughing at it. Then later he says he's gonna walk down the ramp. Like, what is going on with these promos? Like, these guys are another level tonight. Is it jet lag? He's gonna walk down the people's ramp. Divas tag match up next as Mighty Molly and Stacy Keebler take on Tori Wilson and Lita with Trish Stratus as the guest referee. We've been getting reminders for this match all night from the beginning to end. Every time there's a wrestler who comes out with the valet and the valet's not there, they're like, oh, don't worry, folks. She's going to be coming out later for that Divas tag team match. But you know what? Sounds strategy. Don't overexpose them. Paul Heyman says of Stacey Keebler, quote, her mere existence turns me on. Dude, Lita sporting a black eye in this match is a result of the angle they're doing between her and Matt where they're teasing a breakup here because for the last couple of weeks, Stacy has been hitting on Matt as of late. Then last week on Raw, Matt accidentally elbowed Lita in the face and almost cost her a match against Keebler. Dueling cartwheels between Tori and Stacy to start things off. Things don't look great until Lita enters the fray. She throws Stacy around. Tori starts getting beaten down by the cheating heels. We get a sneaky double team submission that doesn't quite work, but I do respect the effort. Tori makes a weird the sound after a backbreaker. <laughs> Lita with the hot tag in, looking strong here. She wants to do poetry in motion, but Molly puts a stop to that. Tori catapults her into the keebs. Lita with a twist of fate and wins for her team. Stacy's got a problem with Trish's officiating, but Trish has no time for that bullshit and takes her down with a bulldog. I give it one and a half stars out of five. It was a decent enough match. I think Lita and Molly did a good job kind of being the ring generals and holding that thing down uh, more than any right to be. Uh, Stacy and Tori didn't do too much of note in this thing, but the crowd was entertained by it nonetheless. Main event time for the WWF Championship as Steve Austin defends against The Rock. It's the long-awaited rematch their battle at WrestleMania 17. And I'm like, literally, they're using the exact same footage from the My Way package for this thing. Don't try and pretend this is the current angle, guys. Oh, by the way, Austin has now incorporated his watch into his act. So now he's got the what catchphrase, and now he's also going, you know what my watch is saying? The second one didn't take off as well. And poor Austin, he is so beaten up and hurt for the course of this storyline. From beginning to end, he gets his hand broken or his wrist broken at King of the Ring. He gets the staples in the back of his head. He gets the concussion from Vincent Mann's chair shot at No Mercy. He's working The Undertaker with a split eyelid on SmackDown. Austin is not wrestling much these days, but when he does, look out, apparently. Austin jumps rot to get things started. These guys starting out fast and furious, fighting on the outside now, then back in the ring, then back out. The spotlight's not on for them for a little while, so we get this cool, dramatic underlighting on the ramp. Suplex on the steel stage by The Rock. Austin goes for a pile driver right afterward, but it backfires, takes another bump. Austin catapults Rock into the ring post. Rock dodges the hip drop by Austin, but he catches himself, flips the crowd off, clotheslines The Rock, flips him off again. What a power move. Back to the outside, on the announce table, begins to choke The Rock with one of the camera cables, drops him on the table. Now Rock seems to have hurt his knee. Austin does not like the cut of Earl Hebner's jib. Gives him the finger. Earl gives it back. Austin with a double deuce elbow drop after some hilarious false starts. Rock begins to come back. Hits his own Fez press and double deuce elbows. Austin catches the Rock in a sleeper. After a while, the Rock fights back and puts his own sleeper in with a terrific duh! Duh! Austin crab on the Rock. Rock grabs the ropes to get a double down. More fighting. Earl Hebner's destroyed in the corner. The Rock locks the sharpshooter in, but there's no referee. Austin puts on one of his own, but somehow The Rock reverses it. Then Kurt Angle shows up and decks Rock with the chair. Chris Jericho with the save and whomps Angle with it. But of course, The Rock suspects that Jericho's the one who hit him. Rock clotheslines Jericho out of the ring, hits The Rock bottom, still no referee. Rock ejects Angle, spine of the pine, goes to the people's elbow, but Angle hits him with the title. Austin hits the stunner, the pin, and the win. I'm going to give this one four stars out of five. You know, bizarre pre-match promos aside, this was a pretty darn good main event. I think we got a little bit of that Rock Austin magic here on this night. It was a fun match, but I think they went to the outside way too much, even by Rock Austin standards, which is saying a lot. And I will say again, I like that they did advance the Rock Jericho storyline. It's the only thing that gets kind of it was somewhat remotely progressed on this show. They do a decent job with that as well, including in the finish. It's a solid main event to this UK pay-per-view.
My grade for Rebellion 2001 is a C plus. There are some good things on this show. Like I mentioned, the cage match is pretty good. Uh, Rock and Austin was great. Jericho and Angle was even better, I think. Uh, not a lot of bad matches on this show, save for one or two. And like I mentioned earlier, if you kind of judge this show as like a fancy international episode of TV, if you're watching this kind of like I am on the on Peacock or on the network or something, then that's a solid show of TV. But as a pay-per-view, it doesn't really offer anything new or different. There's not much in the way of angle progression or anything surprising. This is kind of a run-of-the-mill show in that sense, but at least the wrestling is fine. Well, folks, at long last, we are reaching the final leg of this storyline. In two weeks, we finally covered the dramatic conclusion between Team WWF and Team Alliance, winner take all, Survivor Series 2001. I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.